Hey guys, welcome back to the Unity 2D platformer tutorial. So in the last video, we got our player to jump and to fall, and we know whether or not they're grounded. So the next thing we're going to do with our animation is make our player actually walk. So we're going to go to animation, and we're going to select our player, and we're going to click create new clip. And then we want to make sure that we select our animations folder so that everything's organized. And then we're going to type in walking anim. Okay. So now we have our animation. We just need to add the sprites to it. So we're going to go back to our project and go to our player. Um, and then we're going to look for run. So we're going to make one sprite play every nine milliseconds. And basically what this means is Sprite animation works by showing pictures so quickly that your brain uh, looks at those pictures and it makes it think that it's moving very fluently. So in order to do that, we need to make the pictures move very fast. So we're going to make each one play every nine milliseconds. And you can see that by looking at this time frame right here. So nine um, and then 18. And then 27, and then 36, and then 45. So now if we go back to our game and we click play, we can see that it looks like our player is walking. Uh, there's a little bit of a lag though. And the reason why is because as soon as it's done this, it will immediately jump back to the first one without waiting any extra time. So it hits the last image and then resets right back to the first image. So what we're gonna do is take our first image and add it another um, nine ahead, so to 54, and then we'll click play. And then now it's completely fluent. So now all we need to do is change our animation to walking when our move input is not zero and we're grounded. So in the last video, we put this into an else if, but we're going to make it its own if. We're going to say if move input equals zero and we're grounded, um, then we're going to change our animation to animations.idle. Else if move input equals, or sorry, else if move input does not equal zero and we're grounded then we're going to change our animation to animations.walking. And because we have everything already set up, everything else should work in the code. However, we will need to do something that I forgot about. If we go to our animator in Unity, you're gonna see um, this animation down here. We can actually drag this animator up here to make it a little bit easier to view. Okay, so we're gonna create another transition to our walking animation. And then we're gonna do this when state equals three. So conditions, if state equals three. Then we're gonna go into our settings and we're gonna turn off fixed duration and turn it back to zero like we did to the other ones. So now if we click play, we do not have a walking animation. So something is going wrong. Okay, so I figured out what the problem was. Um, I didn't uncheck can transition to self. So make sure you click this down here, the connector that goes to the walking animation and make sure you uncheck that. So now if we take a look at it, awesome, we can walk, we jump in the air and we fall down. So our player animation is pretty much good. We're gonna have um, an animation when we get hit by an enemy in the future, but obviously there's no enemies right now, so we'll deal with that um, later. So the next thing that we need to be able to do now is create our enemies. So I'm gonna right click and click create empty. And we're gonna, name, we're gonna rename this to frog. And the reason why is because if we go to project, and we go to enemies, they have provided us with a frog enemy. So we're going to give it a sprite renderer. Uh, 
And then we're going to put our idle frog sprite into it. And now let's make it just a little bit bigger and see where it is. Okay, so when we created the object, it didn't put it at position zero. Sometimes that happens. We'll just do that. And then we need to make sure that under our sorting layer, we have it set to enemy. Otherwise, it will go behind the background and that's why you can't see it right now. Okay, so then I'm going to drag it down a little bit so that it's not in the way of our camera. Okay, so we've got our frog. So the idea that I had behind this is we're going to make our frog jump to the left and then jump to the right in an infinite loop. And if our player touches the frog, they get damaged. So we are going to create a much bigger platform. I'm just going to make five here and then take the ground and stretch it out. Then I'll do the exact same thing with the other collider. And then now that we have five, which is a good number, what's really cool is we can just actually copy and paste this platform. And we can set it over here. So remember, we don't want two platforms to touch each other, but if they're no longer touching each other, um, then we need to make two separate objects. So we could rename this to like platform um, five, which means that there's five of them. Uh, and then we could just make one called like platform three, and then we'll be able to reuse them. But for now, we'll just leave this here. So then we're going to take our frog and we're going to put it all the way to the end of this platform so that that way it'll give us some room for when we start making it jump. So we're going to give our frog a rigid body. We're going to freeze its rotation so that it can't rotate if it touches something. And then we're going to give our frog a box collider 2D. As you can see, the box collider is a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So we're going to click edit collider and we're just going to bring it down. Awesome. Now if we turn our game on, the frog should fall onto the platform. Oh, we can't see it yet, but yep, so the frog did fall onto the platform. So um, we are going to actually just move our main camera over so that in our game we can see it. Cool. We're going to eventually make it so that our main camera follows our player, but for now we just want to get our frog working. So now we're going to add another component onto our frog called frog controller. And this is going to be what makes our frog move. So we're going to open that up in Visual Studio. Great. So we're going to be doing a lot of the same things with our frog that we had to do with our player in order to get our player to jump. So we're going to need to check if we're touching the ground. We're going to need to give it some animation in order to make it look like it's jumping or it's falling. Um, we're going to be able to make it swap its sprite left and right, depending on what direction it's facing. So hopefully this is a bit of a refresher and is a little bit easier than the last part was. So we're going to have a public bool facing right. And we're going to set this equal to false just right off the bat. We just never really want a value to be null um, because then if we make an error in our code later and it tries to access facing right and we haven't set it to something, it'll crash our program. So we just want to always try and default set our values. Then we're going to add our public layer mask, what is ground. And this is what is going to tell the frog if we are touching the ground. Then we're going to have public bool is grounded. We'll set that to false by default. Then we'll have public bool is falling. Equal to false. And then public bool is jumping. Equal to false. So we've done that with our player too. We're also going to want a jump force. X. And we'll set this equal to 2. 
And then we're going to want a jump force y. We'll just set that to 4. So these variables are what we're going to add to the velocity of our rigid body when we jump. So in our player controller, for example, when we jump, we only add velocity to our y because our player is being controlled by the keyboard, not by the jump. However, when the frog jumps, we're going to want it to move forward and up at the exact same time. So we're going to need to be able to control both of these values using our jump force variables. Then, if you remember in our player, in order to detect whether we're jumping or falling, we use our last y position. So we're going to add that here as well. Public float last y position. And we'll just set it equal to zero. Then we're going to need to add in our future animations for the state variable. So we're going to have public enum animations. And we're going to have idle, which will equal zero. Jumping, which will equal two. And falling. Oh, sorry. Uh, jumping will equal one and falling will equal two. And then we're going to have another one to represent our current animations. Current anim. We're also going to want to access our frog's rigid body. Then in order to flip the frog, we're going to want to access its sprite renderer. Then in order to change our frog's animation, we're going to want our animator. Oh, whoops, I hit caps lock. Animator, anim. And I think that should be good to start. So when the program first loads, we're going to want to set our last y position to equal transform dot position dot y. And then we're going to want to grab these three um, components. So we're going to do RB equals get component rigid body 2D. Sprite renderer equals get component sprite renderer. And anim equals get component animator. Great. So now because we're dealing with physics, remember we can't use void update, we have to use fixed update. And to start testing this, what we're going to do is we're going to set it so that when the frog is on the ground, it will wait two seconds and then it will jump. So we're going to call this idle time. So we're going to call, we're going to have a new variable up top called public float idle time. And we're going to set that equal to two. So this is going to make it so that, um, the frog jumps every two seconds that it's on the ground. So if we change this to like 20, it would jump every 20 seconds. Then we need to keep track of a current timer. So we're gonna have public float current idle time equal to zero. And then we're gonna have a public bool is idle equal to true. So now in our fixed update, we're gonna do if is idle which will change when we make our frog jump. So is idle will be set to false when it jumps. Then we're going to write current idle time plus equals time dot delta time. And basically time dot delta time is just saying add the real world time. So if we're constantly adding time dot delta time to current idle time, it will count in real seconds. It's so like one, two, three. Then we're going to say if our current idle time is greater than or equal to idle time, then debug.log jump. And then set current idle time back to zero. Okay, so let's. Okay, so let's explain this a little bit better. So. We have our current idle time. This is our current timer, almost like a stopwatch. And it's constantly adding time to our timer. So after we add time to our timer, which happens like every millisecond, it will say if our timer is greater than or equal to idle time, which is two. So if two seconds have passed, 
then we're going to debug.log jump and this will be where we write our jump code and then it's been two seconds so we want to set our current idle time back to zero so that we can restart that timer so if we go back to unity and then we load up the game and we check our frog you'll notice that our current idle time keeps going up and then once it reaches two, it jumps back down. So we know that code's working. Now if we go to our console and we just click clear, you'll notice every two seconds it says jump. So our code is working. So every two seconds once we code uh, a jump functionality, it will work. And as you can see, uh, the console is great for debugging and making sure that things are working along the way. Because if we had written 100 lines of code and on our 13th line we made a mistake, uh, we would have to debug 100 lines of code. But this way, we know things are working already. So we're going to make a new function um, called jump. And this is where we're going to copy our debug.log to. And then we're going to call our jump function, which we will add more code to. Then we're going to set facing right equal to not facing right. So if they were facing right, they will no longer be. If they weren't facing right, then they will be. Then we're going to set our sprite renderer dot flip x to equal facing right. So now if we look back at Unity again, we should notice that every two seconds our frog flips. Okay, great. So you can imagine a jump happening in between these. So we're going to actually want to call our jump function after we flipped our sprite because to determine what way we jump, we're going to use um, which way we're facing. So if we're facing right, we jump to the right. So we're going to call this after. So just make sure you made that fix. And now we're going to actually start jumping. So immediately we're going to set jumping or is jumping equal to true because we want the rest of our code to now know that we're supposed to be jumping. Then we're going to create a new variable called direction and set it equal to zero. And this is going to basically be our move input from our player controller, except for um, our keyboard is not determining our move input anymore, uh, what direction we're facing is. So if we're going to type if facing right, then direction equals one. Else, direction equals negative one. Whoops. So it would be a good time to add to that if I type in like in if facing right equals true, then direction equals one. Well, you can actually get rid of the true and it's just a shortcut. So if you write if facing right, it means if facing right equals true. I'll fill it in just to make it easier to understand for you guys though. So now that we know what direction we need to face, we need to add velocity to our rigid body. So rb dot velocity equals new vector two jump force x times direction and then comma jump force y. Okay, so what exactly is going on here? Well, we have our jump force x and our jump force y that we declared up top. So the higher these numbers, like the higher the x number, the farther to the right or left your frog will go. The higher the y number, the higher up the frog will go. Uh, we multiply it by direction because remember, if it's a positive number, it goes to the right. If it's a negative number, it moves to the left. So if we're not facing right, so if we're facing left, um, we set our direction to negative one. So if our jump force x is two times negative one is negative two because a negative and a positive uh, multiplied together always gives you a negative version of the number. So this way we'll move either left or right depending on our direction variable. So we do need to make a little bit of a change um, to what we had before because right now we have it set so that our frog jumps every two seconds. But we don't want it to jump every two seconds. We want it to jump every two seconds that it's touching the ground. So for example, it could take two seconds to, for our frog to jump. So then if it calls jump again, it will try and jump when it's already in the air and you'll run into a bunch of problems. 
So alongside is jumping equals true, we're going to set is idle equal to false. We are no longer idle. We will become idle again once we touch the ground again. So now we need to determine if the frog is grounded or not. So we've already done this code in our player controller. It's basically the exact same thing. Is grounded equals physics 2D dot overlap area new vector 2 and then we're going to grab our frog's position dot x minus 0.5 f then the transform dot position dot y minus 0.5 f then we're going to create another new vector 2 transform dot position dot x plus 0.5 f transform dot position dot y minus 0.51 f and then we're going to send in our layer for what is ground so remember basically this is just drawing a rectangle around the bottom of our frog and saying is this rectangle overlapping with the ground so now we're going to say if is grounded and we're not jumping Whoops, I didn't put the and in there. And so basically this is going to say we have just fallen onto the ground. So you are technically grounded when we set to, so when we set is jumping equal to true, we're technically still grounded because we're still on the ground. We're just telling our code we're about to jump. And then we actually make our jump. So we don't want our code to come back up here and say, oh, we're grounded, so continue doing things that you're supposed to do only when you're touching the ground. So we only want to go back to idle if we're grounded and we're no longer supposed to be jumping. Well, when we start falling, we're going to, we're going to say we're no longer jumping. So this is going to only trigger if we are touching the ground and we are not jumping. So we're going to say is falling equals false is jumping equals false, is idle equals true. Okay, so we have just touched the ground. Else if transform dot position dot y is greater than last y position and we are not grounded and we are not idle then is jumping equals true, is falling equals false, then else if transform dot position dot y is less than last position and we are not grounded and we are not idle, Then set is jumping equal to false, and then is falling equal to true. And then at the very end, we're going to set last y position to equal transform dot position dot y. Okay, so I'm going to do a in-depth explanation of this. However, I do want to make sure that the frog is moving. So let's click play and see what happens. Okay, so the frog jumped. Unfortunately, it uh, jumped right off the map. <clears throat> so we're going to drag it over here just a little bit to give it some more room and see if it'll jump back too. Okay, so once it lands, uh, the time isn't going back up and is idle equals false. But if we directly set is idle equal to true, then it's good. So we do have a bug where it's not determining that it's idle when we touch the ground again. So let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, so we haven't set our layer here, so the physics.overlap area won't even work. So remember to set what is ground to be ground. Maybe that will fix our problem. Okay, so it's looking like it is. 
So the next thing we need to do is animate, but now I want to really go over what's going on. It's sort of hard to do that as we go because things aren't done yet, so it's not quite connected. But now we're going to go over that. So up here we have this if is idle. This if code, if statement code, only gets called if we are idle. Simple enough. So now we're going to add real world time to current idle time. And then if two seconds have passed, remember this is two seconds because idle time right here is equal to two. So if two seconds has passed, so if current time is greater than or equal to idle time, um, then we're going to tell our frog to jump and change the direction it's facing. So now when we go down the jump, we're going to add our four store rigid body to make our frog jump. Now back up here, we have this to determine if our frog is grounded. So we've already gone over that with the player. And then down here, this is where we determine sort of our states. So I'm going to explain this if after I explain down here. So if our current position is greater than our last position, sorry, if our current Y position is greater than our last Y position, then we are going up. And if we're not grounded, then that means we must be jumping. So we are jumping and we are not falling. We're resetting is falling to equal false. Um, however, if our current Y position is less than our last Y position and we're not grounded, then we must be falling. So um, after we jump, we will always then go into a falling state no matter what. If you jump, you have to fall back down. So then up here, if we're grounded and we're not jumping, actually this might be easier if I just write if we're grounded and we're falling. Hopefully that's a little bit less confusing. It'll do the exact same thing. So if we're grounded and we're falling at the same time, then we want to say we're no longer falling. Oh, this is supposed to be is jumping. Is jumping equals false. Okay, so we're going to say if we're grounded and we're falling, then that means we're no longer falling, we're idle. So we have just fallen onto the ground, set to idle. Or I guess, set idle to true. We are going up and are not grounded. Set is jumping to true. We are going down and are not grounded. Set is falling to true. So it's really important um, with this grounded part because remember if we were on a moving platform that was going up or down, we would be going up but we're not jumping. And if we're going down, we would be going down but we're not falling. So it is important that we have this we're in the air um, part sectioned off. So then up here, we fall onto the ground, is idle gets set to true. And then the, this two seconds starts all over again and then we jump. So it's kind of just this endless loop until we get our frog to jump. Finally, we just need to create our frog's animation. So we're going to type in void, change animation, and we're going to send in our new anim. And it's going to be the exact same code as in our player. So we're making sure we're not trying to change to the same animation. Then current anim equals new anim. And then set integer, whoops, state to new anim. Okay, so because of this code, all we have to do is call change animations and we will be good. And we already have our animations up here. We have idle, jumping, and falling. So if we go down to here, set idle to true. So we're going to call change animation, animations.idle.
And then we're going to do the exact same thing for jumping. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for falling. Now we haven't actually created our animation for our frog yet, so we just need to do that. Click create. And then make sure we go to our animations folder. We're going to create a new folder called frog. Okay, and we're going to call this idle anim. And then we're just going to drag in the first frog. And then we're going to create a new one called jumping anim. And then we're going to go to jump. And then we're going to create another one called falling anim. Then we're going to put in fall. Now if we go to our animator and then we click our frog, you'll see we have three animations, idle, jumping, and falling. So we're going to go from any state into these, so just click make transition. Um, and then click it and make sure you set if, oh, we need to add our parameter over here. So we're going to create a integer and we're going to call it state just like before. And we're going to say if state equals zero, then go into our idle animation. If state equals one, go into our jumping animation. And if state equals two, go into our falling animation. Let's just double check that. So yep, that seems about right. Now we want to also make sure that we get rid of this fixed duration, set this to zero, and can, tr can transition to self is off. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other two. And now if we click play, let's see what happens. Okay, so our frog is jumping. 